What's up, fellas? So I'm out here uh, fixing to do some stuff on the Stupor Trooper, but I figured I'd show you just to uh, clarify what setup I ran at the track with it this last, I guess it was a week, Sunday? No, Friday night. So it'll have been the end of uh, our first week, our first Friday night in April. Whatever that was, the third. So anyway, um, I ran it two weeks before in uh, mid-March. I had a four-hole throttle body, speed density, uh, air pan. So it got air in from the back of the cowl there. And it ran a 735 at 93.3 or thereabouts. So I took the four-hole throttle body off, run a... I got my mass air meter working right with a little screen in it like this here. And it seems to run better at the uh, wide open throttle still. A little flaky at part throttle, but it, it works now. So I run a boom tube so I don't have to mess with the air box deal anymore. This is just mocked up because I was taking that apart. So, uh, <clears throat> and that ran uh, 719 at 94.5 with mass air so but the main issue with I'm having with this is uh, because of the fuel line up here I would normally have you know engine coolant temperature right there the sensor for the EFI because the gauge is right down here so I moved it back here to the back you can't see it but it's, it's right back there trust me so anyway when uh, when it picks up the temperature there it's like I got a 160 degree thermostat, but it doesn't get over like 130 back there, 140, because I think the way the water routed, it comes from the radiator, goes down through the bottom of the cylinders, then up to the heads, and that's blocked off, so that water isn't really hot back there, and the engine, the computer keeps thinking, you know, it's not warmed up yet, so I have to keep messing with the tune to get it to run better, you know, so it don't burn up a bunch of fuel. So what I'm going to do is take this Victor Jr. off and mount engine coolant temp sensor here. I got a, an aluminum disc I'm going to have weld, excuse me, welded in. I'll tap it and I'll put the sensor up there for whenever I use this again. I'm going to use it again, uh, most likely on a red car. I got something percolating in my noggin for that. I think I'll stick with a Holley lower on this and uh, a different upper that... I was originally going to use on Capri, but we got hood clearance issues. You don't want to buy an aftermarket hood. You don't want to chop up the stock hood. So, and this hood, obviously, I traded a pair of valve covers for, so it's a real beauty. I'm not worried about chopping it up, as you can already tell on the back. So, anyway, that's where I'm at. This is coming off tonight. The uh, Holly Systemac is going on. I've got the Systemac upper that I butchered several years ago I used to have on the LTD it's, I cut like three some inches of a uh, runner length out of it because I was a retard and uh, it did make more power at peak but I lost some in a torque of the uh, mid-range so but that's all right so anyway this is still same engine I've been running that I put in over a year ago I guess stock 86 short block stock cam good heads good intake 1.7 rockers and then the rest is just the gear and I don't know how much it weighs yet. I hadn't weighed it. There's probably still some weight I could take out of it, but that's for another day. So I'm going to wrap this part up and then I'm going to put the four hole throttle body on there so you can see how that setup looks. And then I'm taking all the stuff off and then I'll do the uh, final when all the stuff's on there. The Holly's on. Later, fellas. All right. And so this, there's no segue there or nothing. That would take editing. So this is the four hole throttle body with these, it would have a speed density computer. Uh, this is how I ran it at the track, middle of March, like I said, 733 at 93. I think the DA was like 700 feet. So this works. I think the other setup works a little better because it actually fo forces air into the uh, engine versus this has to kind of draw it in from the back there. And uh, I think the uh, having ram air the sort of thing works better so that's how that is we're gonna take all this stuff off now and get the holly ready to go on and i'm uh getting rid of that thing 
the mechanical air compressor air compressor jesus christ water pump and i'm putting a different mount on there position the alternator down that way a little bit you'll see it in uh in the next part of the video later hey what's up fellas so it's finally on I got the electric water pump i got the holly on and uh still gonna run the same 80 millimeter throttle body and then uh <clears throat> this is the this upper is what i had on actually the upper and lower what i had on the ltd before when i had the 302 in it the lower has been port matched to the heads this has had about three and a half inches of runner length taken out of it because kind of a knucklehead and i had a computer program that said i would gain like 15 or 20 horse at the top end so i really didn't pay attention to what it did in the mid-range and uh, I, when I had it on the LTD, I want to say I picked up a little bit, but then I was having to turn it a little higher, too. So it's probably better to uh, leave that in there, especially on, uh, you know, cars like ours. Some of the guys that run these in one of the classes, the Mustang classes, they cut, they will sometimes cut a little bit out. Of course, they will cover the welds up, too, but then they're turning there's like 8,500 RPM also. So, uh, so again, like I said, I got the electric water pump on. Put the alternator bracket lower down here, and then I got a fan and water pump controller by DC Controls. They, uh, I've got them on all my cars. Up oh, this one and the one on the red car because it's got electric water pump as well. But that runs the fan, the uh, water pump, all that stuff. So I ain't got to mess with nothing. No relays. I just uh, run a few wires for that, and you're you're on your way. One thing on this, the electric water pump gets rid of the uh, thermostat bypass hose and uh, that little cap on there I noticed when I was reading the description of these on the O'Reilly site it said made of automotive grade rubber the other ones that you get like in the help section they're just plain you know rubber like you get on that valve the uh, what do you call it vacuum caps that tend to crack and rot out after a year so this one the top one's a 5 8 the bottom one's a 3 quarter on this you need a 3 quarter for the for the bypass hose to block it off so hopefully being it's a better rubber it'll last a lot longer and uh on this water pump the electric water pump it's got all the allen stocks fittings on here but to get to this one down here i had to cut a little bit off the allen stock so i could get that in there to tighten it up because otherwise it's just not happening the uh elbow's in the way and it's uh, a bear so but all in all, it's pretty easy, just uh, tedious, and I drain everything out. I figured while I had the uh, antifreeze drained to change the intake, I'm going to change the front, the uh, electric water pump as well, get all that stuff taken care of. So <clears throat> now that uh, it's on, we're gonna, supposed to go to the track tomorrow, but it's supposed to be like 80 degrees. So uh, we'll see how that works out. It's probably not going to pick up any compared to what I did last time. But hopefully we'll we'll try it out. We got the boom tube we'll have on there, and uh, we'll see how it works out. And I will let you know. All right, later, fellas.